the past few days have been very unpleasant and anxious. The truth is, I haven't been able to get a good night's sleep because of my anxiety. I kinda dropped out of high school. And this may be the reason that I'm so anxious these days. I don't have anything to do because of the quarantine. I can't really go outside and practice my freestyle. Or just go outside and make YouTube videos. I tried learning a new language but dropped it after a few days of studying it. So all I do now is sleep, eat, shit and watch anime. I have been watching a lot of animes lately. Mainly to fill the void that the school left. Recently I started watching this anime called Welcome to the NHK. I found it in my anime list under the category of top rated animes of all time. So I decided to give it a try. I have been doing a lot of self analysis after watching this anime. I messaged my friends and started making small talks with them all to no avail. I really wanted to talk with somebody about how I wished I could just be separated from this world, sit in my room and not be bothered by anybody. How I hate social media, how I hate talking to people, even my own family. When you don't have your own place, it really feels like there's nowhere to escape to. I have had this immature urge to scream or just yell really loud. It's something I could have easily done when I was back home, but now I live in a big city surrounded by crowds everywhere I go. To be real with you all, I have been living in complete isolation for the past few weeks. I really have any to no interaction with people outside my home. I deactivated all my social accounts and don't really read any messages or news because there's really a positive one these days. All this shit that's been going on is really fucking depressive. I drape a blanket that I can pull out at any time and seclude myself, completely isolate myself within the dimension of a tiny bed. And for some reason this makes me feel less anxious like, like I'm free. But in reality I'm, I'm still lying within a horizontal dimension of a bed. There's not even enough space to stand up. This shit should make me feel trapped, so why do I feel the opposite? Separated from the world, the storm, the thunder, the anger, the head, and the confusion. I like this miscomprehension where I can sit on my bed and browse enemies and porn and make YouTube videos whenever I please, thinking there's no one but me in this entire world. This anime makes me feel empty in the best possible way. Most video games, cartoons, anime, manga and light novels glorify the otaku life by normalizing and even idealizing it. There the protagonist says fuck the real world and gets lost in fiction, thinking 2D is all they need. Social awkwardness, anxiety and serious depression is neglected and often romanticized in a pretty disgusting way, especially because the market is aimed towards the same people. These people will think they can stay in the same state and succeed in real life just like their 2D protagonists. Only a few series go through the routes to show the awful side of the otaku life. Don't get me wrong here, there's nothing wrong with loving enemies or even preferring it to other pastimes. But the ill lifestyles that are generally promoted through mangas, memes, youtubers and social media is, is a serious issue that a lot of people fail to recognize. Welcome to the NHK is a realistic anime that tackles some of the most sensible issues that a certain faces. It highlights the importance of genuine human interaction and a healthy lifestyle. Rather than making everything happy and positive, NHK reminds you that life can suck and it might suck for 90% of the time but you aren't a fictional character where everything just works out by the end. In fact, life will be hard and unfair at times but if you don't give up you might become a little brighter day by day. NHK is all about people who blame misfortune on others and conspiracies, hide away their own faults and problems while using others less fortunate than themselves to feel as if they were someone special. It's an anime where depression is around every age for every major character. Despite its constant dark social undertones, it shows that with the proper company of people that you can really trust, you can face your demons, overcome them and redeem yourself. From suicide, addiction and to substance abuse, this anime has it all. This anime is a real masterpiece of social commentary in fiction. So if you are willing to lend me a little bit of your time, please sit back, get comfy and allow me to bid you welcome to the NHK. 
Sato is a 22-year-old college dropout, jobless, aimless, uninteresting, hobbyless, lives on parents' allowance, sleeps 16 hours a day and talks to himself for the remaining 8 hours, failure of a human being, someone that has no redeeming qualities whatsoever and isn't particularly attractive either, based on what he said. Misaki is quite the opposite, she is initially painted as this pixie dream girl, an unrealistic character who comes out of nowhere to salvage Sato's life. She is portrayed as this gentle, kind and a selfless human being, but whenever he yells, he yells. He is selfish, violent and a borderline pedophile at times. Another important character is a college dropout called Yamazaki. He is the perfect portrayal of an average college student. He's on the brink of failing but he doesn't give up. Unlike Sato, Yamazaki has ambitions. He wants to be a game designer. The thing with Misaki being a pixie dream girl contradicts with what I said before about the escapist media and this anime being different. But it's all about the hope of what we long for. Someone, someone so miserable as myself with what I have experienced I could easily hit it off with somebody, you know, who I thought was appealing or at least as appealing as I perceive myself to be and even fair ups get in a relationship but that's not what I go for instead I delete my social media to avoid and I just I just I just hope for someone to find me and knock on my door saying I wanna go out with me and rescue me from the shit of life that I'm living prior to two paragraphs I described Misaki as a perfect human being with no ulterior motives whatsoever, but as the series goes on, that seems far from true. One of the best moments of the series, according to me, is when Sato explains the relationship between the cat and Misaki. He described it as an unhealthy relationship. The cat acts as if it adores her when she feeds it, but whenever she stops feeding it, it will just move on to someone else. Then she replies by saying nothing's wrong with that. As long as I don't stop feeding it, the relationship won't end. This line alone explains how she perceives friendship and people. She lives a horrible life hating herself. One thing she wants more than anything is to find someone who is worse than her. Someone that needs to rely on her and can't live without her. So when she finds out a person more worthless than her, she finds purpose in life. She felt needed by Sato, so she deliberately manipulates him from the day they met, appearing like a guardian angel wanting nothing but to use him for a project that will help him with what he wants and become the person he desires to be. Her goal is to make him so dependent on her that he will sign his life away to her. So he would continue to make Misaki feel good about herself and she won't be the most worthless one in a relationship for the first time. It all boils down to horrible people acting out due to bad circumstances and rather tackling it head on, they run and hide and use excuses and other people to stay alive for another day. I have seen a lot of people saying Misaki is a horrible person and some even go as far as to say she is manipulative and selfish. I think people don't tend to see the full picture here. Well of course she is what I said before, she is manipulative, selfish, but it doesn't mean she is an awful person. The side of Misaki that we see highlighted is her effort to keep positive. She is trying to do good things to keep her own sanity intact, to preserve self worth by extolling herself as above others so that maybe if she does good enough, she will stop seeing everything that she has had in her life ruined in front of her. But when Sato rejects her contract at the final lecture, she, she loses her reason to live and tries killing herself. I kind of find it interesting how this show made Sato the most privileged character to emphasize him being a hikikomori. Sato has both loving and supportive parents, a steady allowance, a great upbringing and is intelligent. Compared to other characters, Sato's life is nearly perfect in every aspect but somehow he still becomes a hikikomori. This goes to show that external circumstances have little to no effect on mental health and it all comes to the individual himself. When people often come out with depression, they are often greeted with response like you have good grades, you have friends, you have a loving family, you have enough money. So why are you still so depressed? This doesn't help the person one bit and, and might even push him deeper into depression and self-hatred. Sato being a privileged individual still suffering from mental illness is a response against this sentiment. And this says that everyone has the right to open up to others about their feelings regardless of life circumstances.
throughout the series, Sato meets various individuals who sit at points in their life that are undoubtedly low and negative. Suicide, drug abuse, multiverse marketing scheme, pressure from parents are some of the problems they have to deal with. The quote I saw earlier is, is from Avatar and NHK portrays the quote perfectly. When we are at our lowest point then we have very little to lose. So basically any change we decide on it couldn't really hurt us or make us any worse. The characters that form the plots of NHK are flawed but NHK presents these individuals as worthy of understanding. After you spend a few episodes with them, it becomes obvious to you that the NHK wants you to gain an appreciation with, with what they are going through or what they went through. Instead of portraying the characters as victims, this series shows their ups and downs and it does an excellent job of not judging these characters' morality. So what exactly is that made me love this show so much? What is it that made me dedicate an entire video to it? Well, NHK does two things phenomenally well, character development and its ending. It also utilizes the slice of life genre to its fullest potential. What I always loved about this anime is the bittersweet conclusion. It isn't just a good or bad ending like it usually happens in animes. It is just an ending like in real life. People that come and go, crosses that never realize, events that never happen, despite how much effort you put in. Sato thinks he is a despicable and insignificant person and that his life won't amount to anything. What destroys Sato is the fact his entire life is a constant crosswords of choices he has to make and he simply decides to run away from responsibility and choose not to choose because he had the fear of making a mistake. He always felt on the line judged by everyone and he, he just loses his shit at the beginning of the story. In the end, he realizes that making a choice is way better than nothing, that what others think is not that very important, because everyone is as screwed and fucked as he is. And you can discuss the details but this message is very valid in real life too. This idea is so empowering or at least I think it is. It's shooting to know that no matter the grades, gender, age or interest, we all have our own demons and our own flaws. That's why he takes the crucial choices he left blank in his life. He blocked his senpai to cheat and he lets her go, knowing she can have a good life. He renounces making games with Yamazaki because he knows that the thing won't bring them anywhere and tells him to go on in life. And finally he lowers his guard to let love in. It's a bittersweet ending because his friend Yamazaki becomes an alcoholic, his senpai is still depressed and his lover Misaki still has self esteem problems and is obsessive over him because of her past trauma. But yeah, it's still a realistic ending because that's how real life is. I think, I think life's what happens to you when you are busy making other plans. At the starting of the video, I said it's more comfortable for me to avoid people and not engage with them and just hide inside my room because it's much more peaceful and I don't have to worry about hectic and awkward situation. While all these may be comfortable choices, I know they are not the right one. Sato tries earning easy money from the online games and the game he made with Yamazaki but never succeeds and at last he has to let it go, get out and get a real job. What I learned from watching NHK is that the easiest part in life is often the wrong one. You may feel a sense of security but you gradually start to eat away yourself. You begin questioning whether or not you could have done something worthwhile in your life. And the answer is almost always yes. But even so, you continue to live in the same way, hoping for a change, but never changing. It's this ethos that's captured in this series. Now we can learn to break away from it. Following what I just said, the supporting character that's similar to Sato is the one that struck my interest the most. Kurokawa Kazuya has hit rock bottom. He's a hikikmore, but unlike Sato, he doesn't get out of his room. He leeches off his struggling sister, he has got no motivation to live, and all he does all day is play online games. He loves 2D more than real life. He's fully aware of this situation as, as he said somewhere along the lines of, I know I'm a hikikmore and I understand my situation, but, but I hope you never choose this lifestyle. I hate people telling me I could do better. Of course I know that. I have read tons of self-help books and I feel like I could write one myself but I am just too afraid of changing my habits and I am comfortable living like this. I always hope that something miraculous happens and everything would start going smoothly. 
I kinda emphasize with what he said. I myself was like that. I used to watch a lot of YouTube videos and get all hyped up. And before going to bed, I used to think tomorrow is going to be a different tomorrow. Tomorrow I will make a video, but but this cycle continued for bitter two years. I started getting more scared and anxious about what about what if I could be a filmmaker. But I am just too pussy to go outside and film. At times I started overthinking and I couldn't even sleep. So anxiety was hitting me in every single corner. That affected my studies, sleep and relationship. It became the driving factor for me to go outside and make videos. One evening I went to this massive park where I started talking on the camera and that exact moment became my first video on this channel. Kurokawa at the end of the arc goes outside not because he wants to but because he is forced to. At the end of the day, self-help books, motivational videos and medication can't cure what you are going through because it's all individual to each person. And the motivation that you are getting from my stories is also useless. Make sure this is your last motivational video and just, and just do what I or Kurokawa did. Don't just sit there and wait for your condition to get worse. Don't wait to hit rock bottom.